Hello everyone, it's me Wendy from Bake with Baker B. Welcome back to my channel. It's good to see you guys again. Hope you are all doing well. It's been a while that I haven't uploaded any videos. The reason for this is because me and my family relocated from Singapore to the UK. That's why you can see the setting is a bit different. The last few months have involved quite a lot of packing and moving. Although I still can manage keep editing my videos, to be honest, the progress has been a lot slower than I expected. But I'm back. <laughs> anyway, I would like to say thank you for all of your support and of course stopping by today. Alright, so for today's video, I'm delighted to share with you my holiday cookie box. It is a perfect gift for your friends and family. Who doesn't like homemade cookies? In the box, there are six flavors in total. I hope it will be enough to suit everyone's taste. Let me show you what those delicious flavors are. I will be breaking down the whole process from making the cookie dough to packing the cookie box into two parts, meaning there will be two videos. In this video, part one, I will be sharing with you two flavors and really get into the detail about individual steps. Then in the second video, coming soon, the other four will follow and of course I will be sharing with you how to pack your cookie box as well. The reasons for breaking down the process is because I want to show you step by step how to make a perfect cookie dough so that you can apply the technique to the rest of the dough. But if you want to watch the particular flavor, you can follow the timeline and jump into it directly. To make the cookie balls looks quite complicated, but I can tell you it's just a matter of time management because most of the doughs can be made in advance. Once it is made and shaped, you just need to grab it well and pop it into the fridge or even freezer when you are ready for your cookie box. If you follow my steps in these two videos, I'm sure you can create your own cookie box with ease. If I can do it, so can you. Alright, so I better stop talking right now and let's get started. These purple swirl cookies are easier to make than it looks. They are so buttery. Let's have a look at the ingredients. You will need 120 grams of unsalted butter, one egg, 100 grams of icing sugar, 250 grams of cake flour and I divide them equally into two bowls. A pinch of salt and 12 grams of sweet potato powder. If you can't find it, you can also use food coloring instead. Let's get the ingredients ready. First, mix the icing sugar with the salt and beat the egg. By doing these two steps in advance, it will make the process a bit smoother while we are making the cookie dough. No need to stop in between. Once they are done, set them aside. Now, let's make the cookie dough. First, beat the butter until fluffy and pale. Make sure your butter is softened enough. It will be a lot easier to beat to the desired texture. Just like this. Don't forget to stop the mixer in between once or twice to scrape down the size of the bowl and the beaters to make sure every single bit of the butter has been well beaten. When it reaches this stage, you can stop the mixer and add the sugar mix into it. Continue to beat it until it turns really pale in color. Remember, when you start to beat the butter with the icing sugar, just turn on the mixer on low speed first, preventing the icing sugar flying up to your face. When they are gradually mixed together, you can turn on the mixer from low to medium and continue to beat them until they turn into very pale in color and fluffy in texture. Just like this. Now add the beaten egg into two portions. I just think it is easier to incorporate everything together. You can also add the whole egg in one go. Give it a bit of time in between, then add the second portion. Continue to beat until they are well combined. 
Wow, you see the texture and the color of the mixture is so fluffy and pale. I think it is ready for the next step. But before moving on to it, let's scrape down all the mixture because we don't want to waste any of it, do we? Now get a kitchen scale and place a clean mixing bowl on top because I'm going to weigh the mixture in order to get two equal portions. But if you don't have one, you can also eyeball it and place them into two bowls for the next step. From my experience, kitchen scale is one of the must-have tools for baking. If you just start to bake and don't know what tools you need, you can check out my 10 essential tools to kick off your baking journey. The link is in the description box. In the videos, apart from the kitchen scales, I also share my tips for how to choose the right tools for your home baking journey. Definitely, please check it out. Okay, back to the dough. It is 263 grams in total. That means each portion needs to be 131.5 grams. Now, it is 133 grams. It is about right, isn't it? Now, add the sifted cake flour into the butter mixture. I like using a spatula to gently mix them first to avoid any flour flying up to my face. Then, I will use the mixer to mix them well. At the beginning, the mixture looks quite crumbly, but it will turn into an ice cream texture when everything is well mixed. Alright, once it becomes an ice cream texture, stop the mixer immediately to avoid overmixing it. Then use a spatula to scrape down all the dough from the beaters. Now your first half of the dough is done. For the second half of the dough, let's mix the flour with the sweet potato powder first, so that once we mix it with the butter mixture, the dough will immediately turn into purple, just like a magic. But as I mentioned it at the beginning, if you can't find it in your country, you can always add one or two drops of food coloring instead into your mixed dough. Okay, once they are well combined, add this flour mixture into the second half of the butter mixture that we saved earlier. Then repeat the first half dough mixing method. Once it is done, scrape down the dough from the beaters and set it aside for the next step. Wow, look at this vibrant purple. Does it look pretty? Two doughs are done, let's roll them all together, shall we? I place a sheet of A4 paper as a template under the baking mat in order to guide me in rolling out the doughs into a similar size and shape. Then I sandwich the dough with two sheets of parchment paper. By doing this, I can avoid adding any extra flour in order to keep the right consistencies of the dough. Before I roll it out using the rolling pin, I flatten the dough by hand first. It will make the rolling part a bit easier and faster. Then I use my favorite rolling pin to roll out the dough into a thickness of 2mm. If you want to know why I like this rolling pin the most, or uh, just curious that why there are two green plastic thingy sticking on both sides of the rolling pin, Please check out my 10 essential tools for home baking video. In the video, I show you how to use it and how to roll out to a precise thickness. Alright, the purple dough is nearly in the rectangle shape now. Let me put it in the fridge to it for about 30 minutes. Then I'll repeat the same process on my vanilla cookie dough. As you can see, the doughs tend to spread whenever it wants when we roll it out. It is slightly hard to shape it into our desired rectangle shape. Have you ever come across this situation? Please let me know in the description box below. I would love to hear it from you. Actually, the trick is very simple, nothing fancy. All you need to do is to fold one side of parchment paper in to create a straight edge and roll the dough out. Then repeat this process onto the other side. Eventually, it will become the shape that we want. But I can say it won't turn out perfectly, but at least it will be closed. When you are happy with the shape, chill the dough for about 30 minutes or until it becomes slightly firm. Then prepare a sheet of cling film. Because we are going to stack the two dough together, make sure the cling film is slightly longer than the dough. Then flip the vanilla cookie dough onto the cling film and peel off the parchment paper. Repeat the same process to the purple dough. Try your very best to place it exactly on top of the vanilla cookie dough because we don't want to trim off too much of it. 
If you are not that picky, you can just simply start rolling the dough into a log now. But if you want to see a perfect swell inside, just like me, then you need to trim the dough off using a scraper or a knife. But don't throw the excess away. You can gently mix them together to create a marble effect dough. Then cut them out using your favorite cookie cutter and bake them. Be creative. Play around with it. Now we are all set. Let's roll it into a log using your fingers or with the help of the scraper. If you find your dough is a bit too soft, you can pop it back into the fridge for about 15 to 30 minutes. As you can see, mine is a bit soft and I need to chew it actually. If the dough is soft, it doesn't mean that you can't roll it, but it's just a bit harder. That's why a scraper does help a lot. When it is done, trim off a bit of the cling film and use the remaining of it to wrap the dough well. Then place it in the fridge to chew it for about 2 hours or until it is firm. After around 2 hours, take the dough out to roll it one more time to get a better round shape. Then you can just keep it in the fridge until you need to start making your cookie box. For the purpose of this video, let me show you how to bake the cookies for now. But in your own time, you can just take the dough out and get them baked whenever you need to make your cookie box. Let's preheat the oven to 170 degrees Celsius first. Then unwrap the dough and place it onto a chopping board. Use a sharp knife to slide the dough in about the thickness of 5 mm. You can slice it as many as you need. Just wrap the rest of the dough well and it can be kept in the freezer for months. Then bake them in the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes or until the edges turn slightly golden brown. Wow, I wish you could smell them through the screen. Nothing is better than freshly baked cookies. They smell so buttery. Place them onto a wire rack to cool down completely. Then you can store them in an airtight container. Now that's our first baked cookie. Now let's move on to our second family member in our cookie box. If you are a chocolate lover, these chocolate almond cookies are for you. Let's have a look what we will need. Icing sugar 70 grams, cocoa powder 20 grams, softened unsalted butter 120 grams, sliced almonds 40 grams, a pinch of salt, cake flour 50 grams, all-purpose flour 100 grams, and one egg yolk. Please remember to sift all the dry ingredients, especially the cocoa powder, to avoid any lumps before mixing them together. Now we need to make the chocolate cookie dough. I'm sure you know how to do it or what kind of texture that you are looking for. If not, please go back and watch how to make purple swirl butter cookie dough. In that part, I show you step by step how to make a perfect cookie dough. Now our chocolate cookie dough is done. It's time to add our final ingredient, sliced almonds. At this point, you can add any nuts that you like, pistachio, cashew, or chocolate chips, or even dry fruit. It's all up to you. Let me know what you would like to add. But no matter what you add, use a spatula to mix it with the dough to avoid over mixing it. For this flavor of cookie dough, I'm going to use this square mold to shape it. Cookies in different shapes will make the cookie box look prettier. I use this mold for my coffee almond cookie as well. If you want to have the coffee flavor instead of the chocolate one, please go and check it out. Place a sheet of parchment paper inside the mold, then use a spatula to scoop the dough and place it inside it. Press it tight against the mold. When all the dough is done, fold the paper down and smooth out the top of the dough. Once you are happy with it, chew it in the fridge for about 2-3 to three hours or until it is firm. Once again, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to bake it. But in your own time, you can just chew the dough until you need to create your cookie box. Let's preheat the oven to 165 degrees first. After around 3 hours, the dough now should be firm enough to hold but soft enough to cut. Place it on a chopping board and cut each slice for about the thickness of 5 mm. Then place each slice on a baking tray lined with parchment paper. Bake them in an oven for about 14 to 16 minutes. Mine took 15 minutes. It is hard to tell whether they are 
done or not. Because it is a chocolate dough, what you are looking for is the edges become slightly dry and turn just a little bit darker. Please adjust your time depending on your own oven. You know your oven the best, don't you? Let them sit on the baking tray for around five minutes. When you can handle them by hand, place them on a wire rack to allow them to cool down completely. These cookies are so chocolatey, and I like the sliced almonds to give them an extra crunchiness. Mmm, yum! Two flavors out of six are done. Okay, that's it. I hope you found these two cookies are easy to make and will give them a try. But if you do have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments box. I'll be delighted to answer them. Please like and share this video with your friends and family if you enjoy it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And press the bell button next to it so that you will be notified when my videos go live. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye bye.